In this video, I will show you how to create the small 10x10 LED matrix that can display mesmerizing animations, letters and everything you can think of, because it is rather simple to program code for the utilized WS2812B LEDs and the Arduino Nano microcontroller through the fast LED library. So let's not waste any more time and let's get started with the build. First off, I got myself a foam board with a thickness of 5mm and started the prototype build by creating an excessively high strip out of it with my box cutter. I then divided that strip into 4 equal parts, marked the center line of all of them and also marked two 5mm wide slits with a distance of 2cm to each other and removed them afterwards with the help of an X-Acto knife. Those four pieces should then easily lock together in order to form a grid in which each square receives one of those WS2812B SMD LEDs. In order to work they require a 5V supply voltage and just one data signal from your favorite microcontroller, in my case the Arduino Uno. After uploading a simple test code, each of the required 100 LEDs for this project light up one after the other, which means they function correctly. But as soon as I lit up all of them at once, my lab bench power supply reached its current limits, which means that a power supply with a current capability of at least 4 amps is necessary later on. After this test I cut off one LED for my prototype and got myself another key ingredient for this build, 4mm thick beech plywood. I created a 2x2cm square piece out of it with my saw that fits snugly inside the square of my grid. And then I brought in the last important material, 2.5mm thick opal acrylic glass. This time I cut out a bigger square of 4x4cm and used hot glue afterwards to attach it to the grid. Then I also hot glued the LED to the piece of wood, drilled 3 small holes next to the 5 volts, ground and data in pads and soldered a wire on those 3 pads. I powered up the LED through my Arduino Uno and pushed it down into the square of the grids in order to determine an acceptable distance from the LED to the glass so that the light gets diffused properly, which seems to be around 1.4cm. That should be the minimum height of the grid. With that value in mind, I proceeded to trim my foam board to a width of 24.5cm, which is necessary to create 10 2cm squares. And to make my life easier, I did not settle for a height of 1.4cm, I used 1.8cm instead, because that is the height of my ruler, which means I don't have to measure, I can simply cut. After creating 18 of those slices, I used the same tactic as before with my prototype to create the locking pattern, which is quite a bit bigger this time. And just in case you're confused by now, you can check out the video description to find more detailed instructions with sketches and proper measurements to recreate this project easily. Once all the slices with patterns were created, it was assembly time, by simply locking all of the parts together. And then it was finally time for the 100 LEDs, which I snipped into individual pieces beforehand. To mount them, I marked a 24.5 by 24.5 square onto my beach plywood and created the shape with my scroll saw and my angle ruler as a guideline. Then I marked the grid pattern onto this piece of wood and hot glued one LED roughly in the middle of each square. Afterwards I drilled 400 holes with the help of a rotary tool next to each 5 volts, ground, data in and data out pads. For the power wiring, I firstly cut 20 pieces of 1.5 square millimeter wire to size, stripped the insulation off and hot glued one wire above and underneath each LED row. Then I used silver copper wire to hook up the LED's 5V and ground pin to the respective power rail. In order to complete this wiring madness, I used silver copper wire once again to create small bridges that connect the data in of each LED in a row to the previous LED's data out. And after using smaller pieces of the 1.5 square millimeter wire to connect the 5 volts and ground power rails together, it was time for the first test of each row, which turned out to be a success. So I connected the last data out of each row to the following row's first data in through the help of flexible 0.75 square millimeter wire. 
and just like that the matrix was complete and works flawlessly. So I positioned the foam board grid on top of it and secured it to the board with small drops of hot glue. Next I marked the necessary acrylic glass square with measurements of 24.5 by 24.5 cm, used the jigsaw to create the shape and positioned it on top of the LEDs. The summarized thickness so far was around 25mm, so I decided to create sides with a height of around 48mm to leave enough space for the cabling. Like always, I used my favorite measure of 24.5cm as the width but also added one extra centimeter this time so that I could create a rectangle pattern on each side which can later be used to lock the sides together. After I created the pieces with my jigsaw, I added them to the matrix in order to mark a nice spot for the DC jack and the Arduino Nano's mini USB port. I created the cutouts with a drill, a scroll saw and files and then joined the sides together once again to bond them permanently with wood glue and a couple drops of hot glue. After that was dry, I secured the DC jack and the Arduino Nano with two component adhesive, connected the DC jack's terminals to the power rails of the matrix and finally connected the first data in to pin 3 of the Arduino and the 5V and ground pin to the power rails as well. The last step would consist of securing the acrylic glass into place with a drop of hot glue and closing the frame from the back with another piece of beach plywood. And just like that you can create your own awesome looking matrix. Mine is definitely not perfect but I'm still very happy with the results. I hope you like this project. If so don't forget to like, share and subscribe. That would be awesome. Consider supporting me through Patreon to keep such videos coming. Stay creative and I will see you next time.